All right, so we're continuing our Connect series, students connecting students to the connecting God, that God wants to connect with all of you. And the way we're doing that is by having our students uh, teach for this month. So tonight, Kennedy is teaching. Give her a hand. All right. And before she teaches, I want to pray with her, so pray with me one more time. Uh, dear Father, I thank you for Kennedy. I thank you for her heart for you. I thank you for this lesson you've placed on her heart. I pray you would just give her the boldness to speak. I pray you would allow all of us just to listen to what Kennedy would want to share with us tonight. We give this prayer in your son's name. Amen. there's going to be a cool introduction so I just didn't really know what to do with myself so bring a bottle of water so then it's not as awkward um so last week Ben said how Daryl talks without notes and he couldn't do that I can't do that either but I also don't have a cool iPad like Pastor Tim so I just have my notes I thought that'd be something fun to say <laughs> so so um this is going to be a little awkward. I'm pretty nervous, so just bear with me with the ums and the ands. And I'll probably pace a lot, so that'll be something new, too. So tonight, I'm going to be talking about getting caught up in the busyness of life. And when Pastor Daryl asked me to talk about this, I was like, or he just asked me to talk in general. I was like, oh, like, yeah, like I was pretty pumped, but I was super nervous. Um, but then when I thought about what I was going to talk about, it was pretty easy because it was right there in front of me because that's what I struggle with the most, probably. So this is really important to me because um, as a middle school student, and even now as I'm coming to the end of high school, I struggle with it and find myself um, put it, making it harder to put God first. And I notice that I'm not spending enough time with him. And I'm just, I'm, to this day, I'm still struggling. And so I'm not going to be up here talking and telling you guys that you guys are doing this wrong because I'm with you guys, we're all sinners, and we are all going to work on this together. So how often do you guys feel like you're running and you just can't stop? You're just overwhelmed and you're tired all the time. Well, tonight I'm going to be talking about three points, um, what the Bible says about being busy, um, to what extent is it okay to be, bu to be busy, and how to control your busyness. So then you can finally get that rest and you can just stop running. So what does the Bible say about being busy? Um, in Romans 12, Paul is talking about being a living sacrifice to God, and he gives guidelines for living as a Christian um, to this day. So in Romans 12, verse 2, it says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So we are told that we cannot be swept away in the undercurrent of the cultural stopwatch. So today's culture is always telling us that you need to be busy or you need more. And if you don't have more, you need to keep putting that stuff in your life so you can't have enough, which we all know that it's never enough. Um, so we just try and fill our lives with this stuff and being busy, but it's not showing God's glory at all. Um, I don't know if you guys watch The Greatest Showman, um, but there is... There's a singer in there, and she sings Never Enough. And a verse in that um, song, it says, All the shines of a thousand spotlights, all the stars we steal from the night sky will never be enough. And that's just one example of how um, culture is telling us that we need more, and we always need to be filling our lives with something that's not important. Um, so the next passage that explains what the Bible says about being busy is Luke 10, 38-42. So many of you guys would know it. It's whenever Jesus visits Mary and Martha. So it says, As Jesus and his disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, or, sorry. Her sister sat, Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing she came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are 
worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing, to, thing worth being concerned about. Mary had discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. So in this passage, Jesus is visiting Martha and Mary. And while Mary sits with Jesus, Martha is busy working. I mean, both, they, both girls are still doing um, the Lord's work, and it's a good thing, but Martha is getting too caught up in cooking and cleaning and preparing um, that she was doing too much for Jesus and just forgot about him. She kind of pushed him to the side. So in this story, we should not be like Martha. Um, instead, we need to force ourselves out of today's culture, and we need to make the effort to spend time with Jesus. And sometimes that can be really hard, but we need to put forth the effort. So to what extent is it okay to be busy? I mean, sometimes we don't know if it's too much or it's too little. If it, is that okay or is it not? Um, so in Mark 1, 32 to 33, and then also verse 35, um, it says, That evening after sunset, many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. The whole town gathered at the door to watch. And then in verse 35 it says, Before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. So the main thing is, Jesus was super busy that day. He was overwhelmed with all these people that he was trying to heal and all the demons he was trying to cast out. And trust me, Jesus was the busiest, busiest of them all, so he knows how we feel when we're overwhelmed. Um, but he still, he took that time to go to an isolated place, which he went alone by himself with no one else. He took away all the distractions um, and just gave it to his father. So we too need to be like Jesus in that situation, and we just need to go to an isolated and quiet place. So being busy during God's work is okay. Like, sometimes I may think, okay, this is not okay. Like, I need to stop it. But doing God's work is okay. Make sure, like, you see the God's work, okay? So if it's not God's work, then there, you might want to change something. I mean, right now, all you guys in school are called to be students. So throughout this time, he gives you opportunities he, to play sports, or um, be in chorus or band, or maybe in like some clubs like National Honor Society, and you can, you can name it all. Anything is something that God is giving us. So we should take advantage of those. Like, you are okay and you are allowed to go play the sports and give God the glory and be a good um, role model on your team. But when we get so wrapped up in these things, and forget about the one who gave us these opportunities, this is when it becomes a problem. So we always need to keep God the main goal. So if we're not taking time for God, everything and anything can be a distraction, and it can become a problem. So throughout all of what the Bible says about being busy, you may be like, like Kennedy, like, I want to, but I seriously can't. Like, I'm just so overwhelmed, I have all this schoolwork to do, and I just have like this, and I have to go to work today, and I just don't have time, and I'm getting home super late, and I need sleep, and all this. I say that every day, probably. Like, I'm right there with you guys. I'm always like, ah, and you're just running around, and you're just, like, stuck. Well, so how can we overcome and control our busyness? Well, first, you got to look at what you're doing as a whole, and you have to look at purposes of what you're doing. So. You need to look at your priorities. I mean, I'd recommend just like sitting down, just taking a few moments and getting rid of all the distractions and just seeing what's taking up most of your time. Like maybe even making a list would be best. So once you're doing that, you can see if you're glorifying God through that stuff. And if you're not, you might want to like switch it out and just push it to the side. Um, so you may be filling your life up and just trying to replace those things. Or, you may just be filling your life up and trying to replace something. You may feel like, like you're just, you need to be busy. You need to be constantly doing something because you're trying to fill that hole in your heart where you need to be putting God in it. Because it's like we have a God-sized, a God-shaped hole in our heart, and we need to fill it with him and only him. Um, so just invite God to do life with you. I mean, he's everywhere, and he's going to meet you wherever you need to be. So... In Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30, it says, Then Jesus said, 
Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. I'm getting a little parched, so give me one moment. Oh yeah, whenever I practice this, I practice it in front of Ryan, and it was kind of awkward when I took a drink of water, like it is now. And I was like, how do you fix that? Like, Tim Park, Mr. or Pastor Tim, he always does it so like just normal. And so I was taking a drink, and Ryan's like, I just do it whenever I get like thirsty. And then Rachel's like, yeah, and you just yell to the back of the youth room, and then Laura go gets it for you. So <laughs> I just thought that was a little funny thing that I should add. <laughs> so in this verse, Jesus is talking about giving us rest for our souls. Um, so we need to be taking that rest in Jesus. And it may seem like a big, daunting task. Like you may seem like, oh my gosh, I need to spend a half hour in the Word every day, and I need to read down a paragraph, and I need to be so elaborate on this. But you really, if you're just starting out, you don't need to. You can start small, but make sure it's effective. So maybe it would be just reading one verse a day and just writing down like one thing that stuck out to you. Um, it's the simple things, and it's the effective things. I also thought this was pretty neat. Um, whenever I was at Momentum, I don't know if Erin Worthing's here, but she told me that it took some amount of days to create a habit, and I was like, okay, yeah. I can do this. So I looked it up, and there was all these different ones. But what I found the most was it takes 21 days to create a simple habit, and then about 66 days to create a strong habit. So when you break it down, it's actually not that hard to break down. It only takes two months to form a habit. And I was thinking, I was like looking through my planner, because I schedule everything, which is probably why I'm overwhelmed sometimes. Um, February is almost over. There's one week left in it. Like, I was like, wait, I just thought it was February 1st, but I guess not. So that is super, a super small amount of time. So just, like, devote that time and be like, okay, I'm going to stick to this plan. It's like if you want to work out, like, start small and then gradually um, get up. Because if you start big, you're probably going to get burnt out and tired because you're just like, bam, I'm going to go all at once. And sometimes it doesn't work like that. So we can replace the habits that, are we take, that we are taking away from God with a habit that gives time for God. So some examples would be maybe you're already doing, like, spending time with the Word and giving God that quiet time. But maybe you are not um, respecting your parents as much as you should. So maybe you could do one small task to help out your family members, maybe, like, putting the dishes away. Um, I should start doing that. Um, or, like, helping your dad... Bring in wood, maybe. I should start doing that, too. Um, <laughs> another example would be... <laughs> that was pretty funny. I'm sorry. I laugh at my own jokes way too much. <laughs> so another thing you could do is um, spend time... If you spend a lot of time on your phone, which I also do that a lot, um, you should put your phone down, maybe in another room. I find it best to just turn it off and, like, keep it downstairs, and then I'll go upstairs, and then I'm not as distracted and tempted with it. And then you just open your Bible and just spend time with God. Just, just meet him there. And then if you're like, okay, and you don't get distracted on your phone, you can use a Bible app, but it is pretty distracting. I mean, I think we can all agree on that. Um, another thing would just be find an accountability partner. Um, I know sometimes it's hard to keep your accountability partner accountable. Um, but if you just set a reminder, it's just nice to get that text or that call be like, hey, are you doing this? Hey, are you doing that? And if you're not, it's like, wow, I need to like keep going. I need to um, start doing this more often. Because then you're just convicted. And then it's just not a good feeling being convicted, even though it happens a lot of times. Um, another thing is getting an app. Okay, I recently found this app called Little Sprinkle of Jesus. And it may sound really girly, but I promise it's not. Um, it sends you, like, reminders maybe three or four times a day. And it's just, like, little either Bible verses or just words of encouragement. Um, they're, like, funny, too. So, like, 
I got it and it's actually interesting to read. And so it's like, oh, I need to do this or hey, I need to like keep doing this today. So it's just a nice little reminder that pops up. And then also just the YouVersion Bible app, it is um, very good because it has a daily verse and that pops up on your screen too. And that's just really good for a daily reminder. And that could also be your one verse of the day that you can write one thing about. Um, and also, if you guys don't have a smartphone or anything, that cannot be an excuse because I know Ben Kurtz, he had that daily verse sent to him. So there you go. You guys can't get out of that one. So <laughs> just to conclude, um, to take out of this, the main thing would be just to be like Mary and not do so much for Jesus that we forget about him. Um, and it's okay to be busy. It's not a bad thing. But as long as we are resting in God in that... Um, that we just remember that no one was as busy as Jesus. Like, he was the main priority, and everyone was running to him with wants and needs, and he was fulfilling them. So he also took that time, and we needed to be doing that and glorifying God through it. And just invite God to do life with you, and, and start small but affected, effective. God will meet you wherever you're at. So as I pray, the band can come up today. So close with me in prayer. Dear Lord, um, I thank you for this opportunity to get out of my comfort zone and that I can just um, talk to all my friends here and that we can just kind of get on an even level and just talk about kind of like struggles and we can figure out how to get through some things. Um, I pray that as we go out for the rest of the week and even these next two months that um, we can really just dive into your word and start small and just slowly... Um, to spend time with you more and just be giving you that glory no matter what. And that it's okay to be busy as long as we are hanging out with you and we are just meeting you there. Um, I thank you for this evening and um, this opportunity.